This is a washroom cabinet that was built for a customer. It's gonna be 86 inches tall, 27 and a half inches wide, and 29 inches deep. It's gonna have five shelves and two doors. Here we are getting ready to cut down three sheets of plywood to its rough cut size. We are using a homemade straight edge guide for the circular saw to sit on to cut the sheets of plywood down to their size. We're using another homemade straight edge guide to cross cut the plywood down to its size. Now we're using a Craig K4 pocket hole jig to put pocket holes in the upper, middle, and bottom shelves of the cabinet. We are using a jig that is for a three inch base cabinet kick plate. We are not using it as a kick three inch kick plate, but as a three inch space support while I put the pocket hole screws in the middle, top, and bottom shelf. We are also using a pony right angle clamp. By using the jig and the corner clamp, I'm able to put these pieces together. To cover the plywood edge on the four shelves, I cut out from scrap select pine boards a 1 8 thick strip to use as binding to cover the plywood edge. I use painter's tape to hold the binding while it dries. By doing it this way, there is no sign of nail holes. I am using the Craig jig again to drill pocket holes in the plywood shelves. Here is a view of the cabinet as I install the five shelves. I am cutting one by six by eight select pine boards to two inches wide for the face frame that will cover the plywood. I am using the Craig jig to put pocket holes on the face frame boards. Pocket hole screws and tight bond premium wood glue will give the face frame a strong joint. I am using the Rockler pocket hole clamp. The unique design allows easy clamping and surface alignment for the pocket holes on the face frame. I made the face frame 1 4th inch larger than the cabinet. That will give me an overhang of 1 8th inch on each side. By doing it this way, it always covers the plywood edge. Then I use a router with a trim bit installed to trim the face frame outer edge. Now that the shelves and face frame are installed, I start making the cabinet doors. This particular cabinet, the customer wanted raised panel doors. I'm using an old Delta shaper to router the door rails and styles on a two inch board. The router bit comes in a three piece set, one bit for the rails and one bit for the styles. The third bit in this set is a one and one fourth inch raised panel door making router bit. I first start working on the styles edge, which will be on all eight pieces. After I router the styles, I then start making the rails. I'm using this homemade rail sled to cut the rails. I always use a scrap board between the rail piece and the sled. By doing it this way, you can prevent tear out. Now I start making the raised panel pieces. For making the raised panels, I always make two passes through the shaper. By doing it this way, you can prevent tear out. When making a raised panel door out of solid wood, you have to leave enough space between the rail styles and the raised panels for the wood to expand during different seasons. Now that the doors are glued together, I turn the doors face down to put a chamfer design on the door edge for a finished look. I use a homemade concealment hinge jig in my drill press with a 1 and 3 8 faster bit installed to drill the holes for the concealment hinges. I installed the doors to see if I have to trim the doors to get a perfect fit. As I removed the doors and the hinges for painting, I numbered them so I could put them back together. I then put the first coat of white primer on the cabinet and on the doors. I 
I sand down the first coat of primer with a 320 grit sandpaper to get a smooth finish. Now that the primer is sanded and smooth, I start spraying the first coat of the ultra white semi-gloss. After a few hours, I sand with 320 grit sandpaper. After sanding, I wipe off the cabinet with a wet, soft rag. After wiping, I spray the second coat of the ultra white semi-gloss. I let it dry overnight, then I sand again, but with a thousand grit sandpaper, and I wipe again with a wet, soft rag. I start cutting out the back panel out of quarter inch birch ply. I spray with white primer, and after it dries, I sand with 320 grit sandpaper. Since it is the back panel, I put one coat of the ultra white semi-gloss. I pin nail the back panel to the cabinet. With the handles installed, at last, the project is done. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for future videos. Thanks.